So, I wanted to come on here and talk about Eric W. Schwartz's newest uh, story that he's doing as part of the Sabrina-Online.com uh, Sabrinaverse, if you will, called Tribes and Links. And what this has to do uh, with Sabrina overall is it's kind of, a, I guess you could say, a pseudo-sequel to a little arc, you know, that he came up with uh, during the first couple of years of the Sabrina-Online comic book, or webcomic, I should say where Sabrina basically got employed by a character who was originally created by uh, Max Rabbit, and basically her name is Zigzag. And Zigzag always had this assumption, this impulsive, you know, assumption that whoever she hired, uh, she could automatically, you know, get, you know, get in bed with, basically, you know, get it on with, if you will. And Sabrina, as I'm about to show you, proved to be the exception uh, right here. She proved to be the exception right here, where she basically knocks Zigzag on her butt. And what's crazy is Zigzag actually respects that about her, because Zigzag um, has a history, you know, where she basically, you know, was put through a, a similar situation as a child, and she wanted to be very protective of those around her, but you could tell she's inherited some of these traits from her family uh, that she doesn't like. You know, she's inherited some traits that she doesn't like, and that's kind of where Star uh, Stripes and Links comes into, because one thing that's always been like a little semi-plot throughout, a mini semi-plot, I should say, uh, throughout the uh, Sabrina-Online.com uh, web series, uh, webcomic series, uh, throughout its first decade and even beyond that, is Zigzag has always had... Uh, this attraction to Sabrina has always had this goal in her mind, in the back of her mind, to eventually, you know, you know, find a way to bed and get intimate with Sabrina. She's always, you know, had this, um, you know, mindset that that, you know, that's a goal she wants to accomplish. But unfortunately, she's never got the chance to do that because one, Sabrina's fallen in love with a character called Richard, R.C. for short, who she ends up marrying and has a child with. So basically. You know, that passage that she wanted to cross, you know, cannot be crossed anymore. And she's always trying to find out a way to cross a, that bridge in some capacity. And again, this is where Star uh, Stripes and Links comes in. Now, first of all, I want to say that I've been a fan of the book, or of the web series, for quite some time. To where I got the hardcover books. And over here... Um, over here, I have the books that came afterwards. The one where uh, the ones that are based on the first years as parents, and then the one that follows afterwards. Now I do have another one. It's right here called Tales, uh, Tales from Fur After Dark. Uh, that's a little bit more, I guess you could say, raunchy. And I don't want to put it on YouTube because I know YouTube might say something. So I'm not going to do that. But I do have that as well, and it does involve zigzag in some stories. Uh, but anyway, it was basically, like I said, these initial two uh, vo uh, volumes, the, the first decade, if you will, um, that basically, oh, actually, first two decades, I should say, first two decades, uh, that basically you could tell, you know, that you could tell that Zig always wanted to try to cross that path somehow, but she just couldn't, you know, she just couldn't do that. And that's where, um, like I said, Stripes and Links comes in, because one of the things throughout, you know, throughout the first, you know, two decades of the book, and even post two decades, going on to a third decade, uh, the one thing about, you know, about those stories is, throughout them, Zigzag did meet Sabrina's parents. And the father, you know, seems a little smitten with Zigzag when he first meets her, you know, because she's very, I guess you could say, <laughs> hands-on, very uh, intimate, you know, in her uh, introduction to friends and family. I mean, the way she introduces herself to the dad is she literally kisses him on the lips, passionately. But anyway, anyway, long story short, uh, she starts bonding, you know, with Sabrina's mom, Eudora. And it basically gets to a point where they start hanging out. They see that they have some things in common. And they see that they can be themselves around each other. You know, they don't have to be so restricted. Well, we get to this one that Eric started doing about um, a couple weeks ago. And basically, they're once again hanging out with each other. And 
the way it starts out basically is Eudora is questioning whether or not she's still attractive. And both of them have been drinking wine, zigzag a little bit more, you know, than uh, Eudora, but you can tell she's had some. And, you know, like I said, they're talking about whether or not, you know, she's still attractive, she's still hot and everything. And Zigzag, being herself, being a kind, gentle soul, and, you know, just being herself, period, says, yeah, of course you are. You're, you are still a very attractive, hot, you know, MILF, if you will. And while she's telling this, she ends up kissing her on the lips. But the catch is it's Zigzag that kind of, you know, uh, stops, you know, the kissing. You know, like Zigzag's the one that initial, initializes it. When she kisses um, Eudora on the lips, shocking and surprising her, but it's Zigzag that pulls back and it's like, oh shoot, I I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to do that, I don't know what came over me and everything. And uh, Eudora's in like, um, I gotta go, uh, I gotta go now, I gotta leave. And Zigzag's like, well, I can get you an Uber and everything. And, you know, Eudora's like, no, 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 I'll call my husband, uh, I'll talk to you later, you know, I, I gotta go. And she leaves, and Zigzag then, you know, basically just realizes, oh shit, I just potentially screwed up one of the closest friendships I have, and one of the closest, and one of the people I can ac actually be myself around outside of work. And then, boom, she hits her head onto the bar, uh, onto the counter of the bar, I should say. And then Eudora's husband comes, pick, comes and picks her up. He asks what happened. She says she doesn't want to talk about it. Then she ends up talking about it a little bit. And then she, then her husband wants to know, well, what are you talking about? And then she's like, I don't want to talk about it. And then that's how the recent, and then that's basically the recent part that came out. And these usually run for about, I would say a couple, about two months, two, three months, depending on the story arc. And um, basically it's got a lot of people talking. Because Eric even hinted that this is going to be something that's a little bit different, if you will. But I think staying true to what the Sabrina comics are. And there are some people that are, you know, wondering and guessing if whether or not this is going to be a story where Zigzag finally learns, okay, boundaries. You know, you got to keep your boundaries. Because if there's one thing Zigzag um, has, you know, admitted in the story as part of her character development is the fact that she did inherit some things from her folks, mostly her dad. And she didn't and she doesn't like that. And she usually needs somebody to knock her back into reality to make her realize, oh crap, I'm letting what I inherited from my folks, from my father, uh, you know, take over again. You know, so she uh so again she's regretting what she did, probably realizing she just ruined a friendship. But and, and and uh, basically, it's got people speculating, I should say, it's got people speculating whether or not that's going to be the message of the of the story. And that is being, you know, Zigzag finally realizing, okay, I need to get help to, you know, uh, remember that there are boundaries, that I cannot cross certain boundaries, you know, whether I get along with somebody or bond with somebody or not. You know, I got to remember that there are boundaries. But... The other thing, though, that some people are catching on to is that Eudora was not the one that pulled back on the kiss. You know, she was shocked and, you know, she was shocked and taken back by it and surprised, but she wasn't the one to push Zigzag back. Zigzag's the one that stopped. Zigzag's the one that's like, whoa, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And Eudora, you know, she's just like, you know, there in shock. So, you know, it's got people also curious it's got people also curious of whether or not, you know, maybe Eudora is realizing that, hey, you know, maybe there's a side of her that wants to be explored. That maybe there's a side of her that wants to be unleashed, you know, maybe just for, you know, for one time in her life to see what the result would be. And that side, obviously, would, to, would be to explore her sexuality as a lesbian and maybe getting it on with another woman. And whether or not that's, you know, one direction they go in with the story, or that's part of the story, you know, towards the end, we'll have to see. But it will be, uh, it will be, it will be an interesting ride. But yeah, it's, this is this is the kind of story when when you put it together in this manner, it's gonna get even in the first couple of you know uh, pages, if you will, it's gonna get people wondering. It's gonna be, keep. It's gonna get people wondering. Okay, where are they gonna go with this? Is it going to be a story where, you know, Zigzag finally realizes, okay, I can't do, you know, what I assumptionally can do all the time. I got to 
I gotta pull I gotta rear myself back. You know, I gotta pull myself back and not not do that anymore. Or is it gonna be a story to where, you know, Eudora starts wondering about her sexuality and, you know, wonders if maybe there's a side of her, you know, lesbian side, if you will, that she wants to have explored just maybe for one time, you know, and perhaps a zigzag. Or it might be a combination of both. We don't know. But I again that but again, like I said, that is the that is the signs of a good story, you know, even in the, you know, being told, that's a, that those are the signs of a good story being told, even in the first couple of pages, when you have your audience pretty much wondering and guessing, all right, like, all right, where are we going to go next with this? Like, what's the next step? You know, you know where is, you know, where is Zigzag going to go from here? Where is your door going to go from here? Where are they going to meet in the middle of when this is all, you know, to conclude this and everything? You know, that, those are the signs of a good story being told because you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if it's going to be about Zigzag finally getting help and getting to learn about boundaries, even with the folks of, let's say, your employees. Or is it going to be about, you know, your Dora wanting to explore this side of her sexuality-wise, lesbian-wise, maybe just for one time in her life, you know, with Zigzag. Or is it going to be, like I said, a combination of both, meeting in the middle? We don't know. But again, it's, those are the signs of a good story being told. And I can't, I cannot recommend checking out the story any more than I can right now. So in closing, I recommend, you know, checking out the entire Sabrina series if you haven't seen it yet, even Fur After Dark, as well as support Eric at his Patreon and go to sabrina